Dear Mojang, Hi, it's me, Austin! Are you fucking ready? Buckle your seatbelt, strap on your tinfoil hat, and douse yourself in Illuminati repellent because today we're going off the rails and into the wild, wild world of your hit game Minecraft, and it is simultaneously fucking awesome and will blow your god damned minds! <laughs> I've been getting questions about Minecraft ever since I started this series, asking me to cover everything from whether or not you could actually mine diamonds with a steel pickaxe, given that diamonds are harder than I am when Muffet pours me a cup of spiders, to asking me to explain how it would be possible to have an infinite supply of water or lava. So. Here goes. While it's true that diamonds are one of the hardest allotropes of carbon in existence, diamonds aren't actually just solid one cubic meter of diamond in the ground, they actually form deep beneath the surface of the earth where it's super fucking hot and the pressure is super fucking high. They're then brought to the surface by what's called kimberlite eruptions. They can actually reach as high as 16 meters below the surface. Then it's just an issue of digging them out. Ironically, in some cases, you'd actually be able to mine for diamonds using just a regular old shovel. Boom! Confirmed legit. In the case of infinite wells of lava and water, that's some fucking bullshit. Boom! Roasted! Then, instead of doing the world's shortest episode ever, I was like, what else can I look at? Then the question struck me, could the world of Minecraft actually exist? I mean, as a planet, could it? Measuring gravity due to acceleration, the surface area of the Minecraft world, which is 600% the size of our Earth's surface area, doing a wee bit of math, over the course of several days, I was able to build a complete planetary profile for the planet that generates whenever you start a new game of Minecraft. And? Well, it's actually pretty fucking cool. While the Minecraft planet is over 500% the mass of our own Earth, due to its greater surface area and therefore volume, it's actually significantly less dense, given that it actually has a much lower gravitational pull on the surface. Then I asked myself, could a planet with this low density, high mass exist IRL? Yup! Thanks to the Kepler project and the analytical work done by scientists across the globe pouring over thousands of identified exoplanets in our galaxy, over a dozen planets with similar gravitational profiles exist out there. They're called super Earths because they're bigger than the Earth, but smaller than gas giants. Not because they wear skirts and go around fighting galactic crime and god damn I am full of Sailor Moon references this month. I'm just making up for dropping the ball on the Madoka Magica references when I mentioned entropy a while back. At this point, you may be asking yourself, what the fuck Austin, where's the foreplay? You're just gonna drop an entire episode's worth of info on us in the first couple of minutes? Where's the hemming? Where's the hawing? What the fuck? What the fuck does Geralt's dick look like? Good question, hypothetical viewer I just made up. Well, I was making an episode about all of this. Going over the luminosities of nearby stars, of actual planets out there that are similar to our Minecraft planet, blah, 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 dropping the learning, and then it hit me. I'm gonna spend 80 hours making this damn thing, and then a hundred smartasses are gonna be like, but Austin, what makes you think Minecraft's world is a glow? When you get to the end, it just stops. It doesn't loop around the other side. Nah, nah, nah. And then I was like, fuck those people. And then I was like, wait a minute, wait a goddamn tootin' fruitin' minute, those people, those hypothetical smartasses I just imagined, they're, they may be right. No, they are right. I know it for a fact. I only presumed that Minecraft's planet is a globe because I've been conditioned by the cabal of scientists who have indoctrinated our world's youth to hide the truth about our world. The truth that our world isn't actually round. Our world is fucking flat! Okay, maybe I went too far. I didn't get quite sucked into the deep well of round earth deniers or flat earth truthers or whatever the fuck these people call themselves. This realization did get me thinking. Could a flat Minecraft world actually exist? This isn't a silly question, honestly. It would most likely have to be artificial, sure, but could it even work? Let's figure this the fuck out! The reason this isn't a super absurd thing to consider comes from a somewhat unexpected source. Albert Einstein. Now, obviously Einstein wasn't a flat earth conspiracy theorist, but those of you who watched last week's episode on the gravity gun will remember one of his most famous thought experiments, where he said that there's absolutely no difference between standing on a planet that's pulling you down with the force of gravity g and accelerating through space at an acceleration of g, roughly 9.8 meters per second squared. In fact, if you were in a box with no windows, you wouldn't be able to tell whether you were on the planet earth or in space. This is 
called the principle of equivalence. And it's this conceptualization that helped Einstein work all of his math on the theories of general and special relativity and established his groundbreaking and complicated field equations. So is it possible that every world we create in Minecraft is really just a huge fucking box flying through space? Well, maybe. Each Minecraft world is pretty freaking huge, clocking in at just shy of 3.6 billion square kilometers. This is astronomically huge. Thankfully though, Minecraft worlds are also quite thin, a hell of a lot thinner than our own planet. Each world caps out at 256 meters thick. So given an average matter and density spread using some graphs and estimates, we can get a decent idea of what a normal Minecraft world weighs. 183 zettagrams. Oof. This is actually pretty fucking heavy, but it's not that absurd. It's actually about half the size of one of the largest asteroids in the asteroid belt, Pallas 2, which takes up a whopping 7% of the total mass of the asteroid belt alone. Damn. Now, this is large enough to have a detectable gravity already, but since our Minecraft world is spread out pretty thinly, you're not gonna notice much of it, so we can actually pretty much ignore it. Minecraft has a slightly weaker gravity than Earth, surprisingly enough. On our planet, things fall at roughly 9.8 meters per second squared, but in Minecraft, they fall at 9.1, a small difference. But here on science, we like to have every base fucking covered. It's called work ethic. This means that our massive yet thin box is gonna have to accelerate through space at the rate of 9.1 meters per second squared. And how would you do that? Rockets, of course. Rockets produce motion by taking advantage of some basic Newtonian concepts. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. In the case of rockets, it's shooting a ton of high energy exhaust out the ass end of the rocket nozzle, which pushes the spaceship forward. And our rocket better be a massive one because it needs to push out 1.6 trillion giganewtons. How much force is this? Well, the largest rocket ever produced was the Saturn V, which was used predominantly during the 1960s and 70s by NASA. This thing was a fucking badass and produced over 100 million newtons of thrust because holy shit, America! It would take over 16 trillion of these rockets to accelerate our massive Minecraft world at 9.1 meters per second. Sound intense? Well, we're just getting started. You see, the unfortunate truth is that, well, rockets don't weigh nothing. They have mass too, and more mass means more force is necessary to accelerate. This creates a conundrum that anybody who's played Kerbal Space Program can attest to. Bigger isn't always better. A larger rocket may look more impressive, but at the end of the day, you're creating more work for yourself. I'll spare you the nitty gritty details about exponential math functions, but suffice to say that since each rocket adds more and more mass that needs to be moved, and therefore more fuel requirements, we gotta take that into account. Going down the line, we arrive at a final rocket count of over 22 trillion Saturn V rockets, bringing the total mass all the way up to 246 zettagrams. Almost twice what we started with, but that seems reasonable in some sort of fantasy world scenario, right? It may be implausible, but a flat earth version of Minecraft could totally exist if you had an assload of rockets, an infinite budget, and all the time in the world! Wait a minute. Time. Time, time, time! <laughs> Two hundred and forty-six zettagrams of mass pushed by over twenty-two trillion Saturn V rockets. That's what it would take to accelerate our Minecraft world nine point one meters per second per second, right? Yeah, for one second. That means all that work is gonna go into nudging our planet ship forward for one whole second. Then it's fucking done. One whole second of feeling gravity and then you're just like fucking floating out there crying as you creep through space. In order to have gravity, acceleration must continue consistently. That's what separates acceleration, which means to move faster in a direction from velocity, which is just a measure of your speed. Acceleration is change of speed. 
speed, or delta V. And in order to have gravity-like forces, this mother beast is gonna have to keep going. And in order to keep moving for a whole year, it'd take almost 80 quintillion rockets weighing over 198,000 yottograms, almost twice the weight of Neptune. For those of you playing along at home, you'll notice that I said that the fuel and component parts to accelerate this world for just one year would weigh as much as Neptune, which has gravity because mass creates gravity, which means that if you had the means to create a flat Earth, you would just fucking make a goddamn planet instead. Flat Earthers make no goddamn sense. On top of it, humans have been on this planet, and therefore conceivably this fictional Minecraft planet, for over 200,000 years. In order to keep this fictional gravitational force around, you'd have to have enough fuel that it'd weigh as much as a goddamn red giant star. And what's more terrifying is that after a few years, you're starting to reach relativistic speeds, which means that the energy required to accelerate you at a constant rate will be creeping up exponentially as you approach the speed of light. Since it's super unlikely that these rockets are able to dial out an exponential increase in force, the rate of acceleration would start to slow down. So every flat planet is doomed to experience less and less g-forces as time continues on, regardless of how the damn thing is accelerating as it approaches the speed of light. Eventually, it would just be like gravity didn't exist at all, particularly by the time evolution has kicked in long enough to evolve humans. Sorry, Flat Earth truthers, it turns out, unfortunately, you're completely full of shit. If you really insist on living in a flat world, though, I do highly recommend Minecraft. It seems to be doing all right for now. Just, you know, be sure to start a new game every 100,000 years or so, or your character will start floating off into space as you approach the speed of light. Sincerely, Austin. P.S. You know, I wasn't really into anime in high school, and like, all of my friends were really into anime, and I wasn't. But now I'm an adult, and what I do in the comfort and anonymity of my own home is my business, so I've finally been getting into some of the best crops available. Like Attack on Titan. Holy crap, that show. That show is honestly worth the hype. It's unbelievably intense, and there is a video game of it, and I've been super close to doing a video on it. Maybe someday. Anyway. You can find awesome shows like Attack on Titan on Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll is an amazing site that brings the best anime from Japan into your computer. The cool thing about Crunchyroll is that they work closely with the people who actually make the shows you love and gives them a fair cut for letting them host the videos. You can head on over to Crunchyroll.com shoddy to start a 30-day free trial now. Even if you don't want to watch giant monsters eating humans, Crunchyroll recently partnered with Funimation, bringing shows like Cowboy Bebop and other cool shows they've never had before. If you use the link and become a member, you can get these shows in full 1080p HD without ads. That's crunchyroll.com slash shoddycast, which tells me came from us. Do it. Nobody has to know. It'll be our little secret. Also, today I'm going to be streaming Minecraft on hardcore mode, which means permadeath, baby. I'm going to be trying to survive in a harsh, flat-worlded setting. Head on over to twitch.tv slash shoddycast right now and watch me die to a creeper just as I finish my house. God damn assholes! Hello everyone and thank you for watching my episode on Minecraft and flat planets. Those of you who watch my show regularly will be like, what the heck is Austin doing on camera? Well, we started doing new outro end plate things let you click the next episodes new annotation styles and they only let you do it on the last 20 seconds of the video so i was like hey well i just I've, I've been wanting to like say hi to you guys on camera for a while so here i am so this is gonna be something we do every week it'll be a good time you can see my face and it's a beautiful face why waste this hiding behind all kinds of stuff and um yeah that was a lot that episode was a lot of fun to make honestly i had a, a ton of fun I spent way too many days reading about it because I went through like, oh, maybe the diamonds are thing or like, what's the density of like the Minecraft world? And everything was kind of like boring and not super interesting. Even the Minecraft planet, I was kind of like, that's boring. And I was like, what if it were flat? Could that even happen? No. <laughs> that's so frequently the course of events here on science, but you know, it's fun to check it out. Sometimes it's like a surprise, like with Roadhog. It's like, that could kind of happen. You know, a little bit possible, but no, my flat world, no chance. I throw out a personal thank you to our Patreon supporters who make this show possible. You guys are 
awesome. Uh, you guys take money out of your own pocket to support shows like this and shows like what Andrew does, and we deeply appreciate it. You guys are incredible. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, you can go to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash shoddycast, and you can contribute whatever you want to nothing or something. Uh, if you donate a dollar a month, you get like some behind the scenes stuff that I'll post some of my math occasionally. Like if I'm working on something particularly cool that I can't wait to share with you guys, I'll share it there. Also, uh, three people do $3 a month actually get early access to episodes like this and early access to everything we do. That as soon as it comes in and we get it up, it goes to you guys. What else? Follow me on Twitter at ARHorrigan and follow ShoddyCast at ShoddyCast and I'll see you another time! This is where I make it go Goshen Blurry, maybe? Goshen Blur? You can't see me anymore? Well, you can see me move around. Yeah! <laughs>